identity has been on my heart, especially for our women, for, I get some money. And over the last couple days, the Lord has just reminded me, I, I want to read John 15 and John 17 both talk about when how we, when once we receive the Holy Spirit, we become one with God. Amen. That's what it says. And I want to read John 17 real quick, and then I want to tell you what the Lord woke me up to this morning. See, the thing is, we think that we just come to church. Oh, uh, we're just going to spend some time in, in the presence of the Lord to kind of fluff up. Fluff us off a little bit. Help us with our, our burdens a little bit. And then go back out on our way. But that's not what the Lord God's desire is for us. His desire is to bring us into proximity with Him. Not just to become His hands and feet. But church, listen to me. We come into proximity of Him. The closer we get to Him, first and foremost, the more we understand what's messed up with us. The more we understand what's messed up with us. The more we understand. And as we begin to receive his righteousness, we are able to come into his presence. And he changes us from the inside out. Oh, God, help us to have revelation, understanding, knowledge of who you are and how you love us, Lord. Oh, God, that you met us right where we were when we were in the midst and the thick of it. We didn't have to earn it. We didn't have to strive for it, Lord. You said it all. All who come, all who believe. Every unbelief has got to go in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, God, you reign in this house. This is your home, Lord God. We are your children, Lord God. We believe, Lord, that we've been adopted by you. Oh, God, help us to grab a hold of that today. Lord, that when we come into proximity with you, Amen. Everything is changed, not just for that moment, but then we go out and we and it's changed in our lives because we understand that you live within us, that we are one. We are one with you, Father. Oh God, help us. Your word says it. John 17 says, Jesus spoke these things, and raising his eyes to heaven, he said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, just as you gave him authority over all mankind. See, Jesus was given authority over everything, over all. I'm going to skip down just a little bit because I don't want to lose you here. Jesus says, I have revealed your name to the men who have give, gave me out of the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they followed your word. Let me, I missed it. Hold on. I'm sorry. I, I, this is important. I, I'm trying to skip ahead and the Lord said, no, you need to go back. I'm just saying, verse two said, no, I'm going to go, verse three, and this is eternal life that they may know you the only true God yes. and Jesus Christ who you sent. So Jesus is talking to Father, his Father, and he says, you sent me so that they may know who Father through Jesus. I glorified you on earth by accomplishing the work which you have given me to do. And now you, Father, glorify me together with yourself with the glory which I had with you before the world ever existed. I have revealed your name to the men who you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me. Jesus said that everybody, everything was given unto Jesus. Amen. For the words which you gave me, I have given to them and they have received them and truly understood that I came forth from you. They believed that you sent me. I ask on their behalf. I do not ask on behalf of the world. He's talking about the believers here. Yeah. But on the behalf of those whom you have given me because they are yours. When we believe we become the fathers, the creators, the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end, the everything. We are his created being. And if, when we believe we are given back to him, we are removed from the enemy, the world, the, the principle 
this world and we have been removed from the darkness and we have been given back and become adopted in one with the Father. I am no longer going to be in the world and yet they themselves are in the world. He's saying, Father, I, I know I'm leaving, but, but, but the ones that believe are still here. And he knew the wrestling in his flesh that he had already endured and overcome. He knew that we are still human beings and we're still here being tempted, warring with the enemy. And, and he knew that we needed something bigger than ourselves. Amen. <laughs> Praise Jesus. While I was with them, I was keeping them in your name, which you have given me, and I guarded them. And not one of them perished except the son of destruction, so that the scripture would be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and these things I speak to in the world, so that they may have my joy, made full in themselves, made full in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world. Jesus says they've got to endure it. I'm not asking you, Lord, just to take them out of the issues and the problems and the strife and the division. But what I'm asking you, Lord, is keep them away from the evil one. They are not of the world just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. Just as you sent me into this world, I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself. Jesus says it's done. It is finished. It is complete in him. Glory to God. Come on, Amen. So that they themselves also may be sanctified in truth. What are you feasting on this morning? Yes. I am not asking on behalf of these alone, but also for those who believe in me through their word. And that may all be in one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That I also may be in us, so that the world may believe that you sent me. We are in one with our Father. And yet here we are walking around with this mess. I'm telling you, the Lord has had this on my heart for a couple weeks. But here we all walk around with this mistaken identity. We think that we are still the, the people that we used to be before God came because we don't see fruit in our lives quite yet. But y'all, we can't ever get ourselves together good enough to go before the Lord God Almighty. We're never going to see fruit until we get into the presence of the Lord God daily. Tell us, Lord, who every morning, God, show me who I am. Because I know I'm a mess. Yeah, damn, and when the enemy starts telling you all the things you've done wrong, you say, yeah, and I've done that a whole lot more. Come on. For real. The enemy's a punk. Amen. He's a liar. And he is trying to play us like a puppet. Yeah. But the Lord said, once we become adopted, see, that's John 17. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage you to go home today and read John 15. Because in John 15, it talks about the same thing. It talks about being in one with the Lord God. And if we're in one with him, if we are if we are truly, if we believe with our words that we have, and with the word that God has given us, if we could say, Lord, I believe in you, I believe you're my father, then, then we become adopted in him. When we say, Lord, I lay myself down at your feet, I don't want to be my own savior anymore. I don't want to be my own king anymore. Lord, I want to serve you. Whatever that looks like, whatever that takes, then, let, then, then every day that means, okay, that's your starting point. Then every day you're like, okay, God, show me. What, what is it that is causing me to fall this way? What is it, Lord, what are the red flags that are drawing me this way? Lord, show me, God, what is it in line with you? Because I'm telling you, when we come into the presence of the Lord, and, he, and we ask him our heart posture, thank you, Lord, this is what I ask you this morning, Lord, to let all of our heart posture be. To bring me into proximity with you. <laughs> Lord, I ask you, Jesus, in this house this morning, God, to remove the barriers, 
Lord. You are the veil's already been removed. And Lord, I you told me that it's almost like our veil is our flesh, and all we can see is our flesh, Lord. But this morning I say it is finished by the word of God. All authority has been given to you, and the veil has already been removed. So this morning we come into proximity with you. We are in one with you. Bring our hearts in alignment with you. Change us from the inside out. Show us who we are in you, Lord. Show us our identity is more than the sum of our mistakes, God. That this fight that we've been fighting has already been won in you. God, that we are your plans for us are good. That you are faithful. That you have never let us go and you're not as smart about to start letting us go now, Lord. That you are bigger than the circumstance we are fighting. God, that you are so much better than we can even wrap our minds around, Lord. Come on, come on. God, we thank you for your love. Yes. We thank you, God, for your mercy. Yes. Lord, you are worthy of every praise I have. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Oh, you are worthy. You are magnificent, Lord. <laughs> you have everything from me, God. Yes. I poured all my oil out on you. Come on. Everything I am, God, is for you. Yes. Ooh, Jesus. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Come on.